All right. Hello, everyone, and peace of Christ to all of you. I hope my voice is coming good and clear from your side. Uh, uh, first of all, I want to say thank you for all those who support what we do. And it was kind of amazing that the Muslims are spreading uh, like uh, the word around that because they flag me, I am not doing live broadcast. First of all, I'm doing live broadcast every day, Abdul. Secondly, you will not believe how much you supported me by doing the flag. I got a lot more donation, a lot more support, and a lot more subscribers. So, and actually there's one of you, he promised me that each time the Muslims deflag me, he will donate a couple of thousands of dollars. And I said to him, can I flag myself? So that is a wonderful thing, and I don't mind at all. Uh, I'm really, I appreciate the support of people who love what we do. And, you know, um, I have tons of YouTube channels. Live broadcast will never stop. And we can actually open a live <laughs> channel every five minutes. Actually, YouTube is very easy for free. All what you need to do is a phone number to activate. And there's tons of applications in the Internet to do that. So keep dreaming, Muslims. That will never happen. Um, now, we have a Muslim, supposedly, he keep bragging he keep asking to debate me and he is from Saudi Arabia this guy he sent like a hundred text I wanna say challenge Christian Prince I wanna challenge Christian Prince where is the Christian Prince can you bring me Christian Prince huh where is the Christian Prince can we find the Christian Prince hmm. so we said to them okay bring him this Saturday I will be waiting for him all right and now it is Saturday, and now it is 4.30 as we agree. And guess what he sent me finally just a minute ago? He said he don't want to debate me. He want me to, to drink poison. <laughs> he don't want me to debate. He don't want, he said, I'm not going to debate you. Are you looking for someone to uh, for your fake show? He, you know, his text. If you accept to drink poison as your Bible um, I'm read as hadith, what? What? I'm ready as hadith? Oh, okay. Well, are you ready? What about you make a video right now and you go to to the uh, pharmacy <laughs> and buy and buy some uh, rat poison? <laughs> if you accept, you, we can go to Philippines or Philippines. Oh, okay. Your friend country. Yeah, uh, I am in Saudi Arabia, ready to fly over there. Hmm. We can arrange here in a messenger. When I don't know what kind of English this English, but from my side, I will call the BBC to cover. You know, they call the BBC and ask them about the show they did regarding the water of Zamzam, which they discover that it is poisoned. As long as our topic is about poison, because in case you do not know, Abdul. The BBC, they made a study. They took samples of the water of Zamzam and they found. Let me show it to you. When I call the BBC, don't worry, the BBC already did their job. Hmm? This is the BBC. Report. Actually, it's not worth it anyway. Let us go to the topic. Who cares? I mean, uh, you see the the uh, you know what what the Muslim they speak about. They say that in the Bible, in, in the book of Mark, it says that if you drink poison, you will not die. Now you know this is because you are an ignorant and because you are a foolish person who do not understand your own books. So how you can understand our own books? We Christians believe that our Lord Himself, our Savior Himself, He died. He was crucified. So where in the Bible it says that and meant literally that He will not die? All the apostles of Jesus. All the first leaders of our churches, they've been either crucified, beheaded, or been feeding to animals to eat them alive. 
So there is nowhere in Christianity it means such a thing that nobody can hurt you physically. That because you are a naive person who is a fool like your prophet. However, uh, we can find the answer for what is written in Mark in the Bible itself. The Bible is a very symbolic book and it's very deep, but the foolish one is a foolish and you cannot make, you know, in China they say, he left as a donkey, he never came back as a horse. So if you are not a horse, I cannot make you a horse. This is how God created you and this is how you will be. You will see here, it's speaking about the poison of the snakes, the vipers. Those are this is this is not a poison, literally something you drink. This is their poison and their their lips. This is what they say, this is what they do, which means all the poisoned word cannot harm us. If you are with the Lord, nobody can poison your mind, nobody can poison your poison your heart. Otherwise, we do not need to be a genius to ask yourself, well, if the Christian will not die by poison, that means they will not die by, by bullets. I mean, what a difference. Death is death. Then they will not die by, by a knife. Then they will not die by a sword. Then they will, they will not die by anything. But the Christian themselves, their Messiah himself was a crucified and he was killed. So my friend, the Abdul, if you decide to be a foolish man, like your prophet, this is your business. But don't carry your foolishness to our Bible. Our Bible is very deep, have nothing to do with the stupidity. However, it's your prophet who said, Allah Apostle said, he who eats seven ajwa and notice here your prophet is giving us a very clear description for his prescription he's a doctor muhammad dr muhammad he have a degree in anti-poison and magic you see his study oh hold on look like my screen is not showing that's my mistake all right so i was showing in the screen sorry the book of psalm and you can read those verses 140 from 1 to 4 and you will see what is the what is the poison here meant and as we explained that you know that all all Christians uh, the Apostles the Messiah himself I mean who where in Christianity it, it, it teach if you became a Christian you don't die the Messiah he said whoever believe in me and die will live so you die and you will die that is a must same time i find it very funny that everybody die except jesus in islam you see islam is like a kind of american movie there's a guy who have a gun and he shoot everybody and he is the only one who don't get injured and if he get injured nothing happened to him but everybody die that is the isa the muslim even the prophet muhammad himself he died and he died by poison as we will show you and prove it to you but Isa the Muslim is like a Rambo in Islam. He never died. This guy Rambo, Isa, everybody died. It doesn't matter who. Moses died, Muhammad died, the enemy of Islam died, the enemy of Muhammad died. Everybody died, Muhammad died, Khadija died, Aisha died, Abu Bakr died, Omar died, except Rambo. And who is Rambo in Islam? That is the Messiah. If we go here, we will see the wise Muhammad, Dr. Muhammad, peace upon him, who have a degree in magic resistance, saying, Allah Apostle said, who eats seven ajwa, dates every morning, will not be affected by poison or magic on the day he eats them. Who is the Muslim want to practice this? You see, this is literally, this is not spiritually. This is not as you, you cannot tell me this is a spiritual. This we're talking about eating ajwa. Ajwa is is not uh, the word of God, is it in Islam? He, your prophet he did not say the one who read Quran. You know, no, he said he will eat ajwa. So you cannot play the game and say, oh, this is he meant something else. He meant something spiritual. Whoever eats seven ajwa, and here look, Muhammad, he is giving us the right number. Like if you eat six, you will die. If you eat five, you will die. If you eat six and a half, you will die. You have to eat exactly seven. If you don't eat exactly seven, you are in trouble. 
and for sure Muhammad he knew what he's talking about he is the Prophet of Allah uh, I want to remind people please don't forget to subscribe and join my groups in other uh, uh, websites additional to YouTube because this is how always you can be updated so anytime we lose a channel we have we have a million channel to do live broadcast all what you need to do you just go to this website go to patreon.com and you will see where is my new podcast as simple as that right now let's say we lost this channel who care I have thousands we open you one and we start live podcasting I'm working right now in my book and I'm trying to finish it before I go on my coming trip this way I'm not doing like uh, long hours because I want to finish reading the book so it's going to be published soon and it's going to be about the Apostle of Jesus and Islam which is going to be very interesting because nobody did a book like this before and for those who got my book which is uh, six and Allah please don't forget to make a review because until now only maybe one or two review is made and but but doesn't fit with the number of people who bought the book there's a lot of people buying it so it doesn't make sense I mean just make an honest review don't make a false review don't say it's wonderful if it is not don't say it's amazing it, it is not say what you think it is all right don't do what the Muslims do we are not fake and we don't do taqiyya if the book is good for you say it's good if it's wonderful say it's wonderful if it is stupid say it's stupid and even if you're a Muslim by the way you can go and make a false review because that's what the Muslims do because at the end of the day even the false review work for the benefit of my book when a Muslims speak against my book that is an honorable thing for me that's mean this book is speaking something serious if the Muslims start saying God bless you may Allah protect you very nice book the same as they do to James White and this garbage then there is something wrong with this person so please don't forget to whatever book you have of my books the Germans the Swedish the French it doesn't matter all right if you if you got the book already please don't forget to make a review of it and make an honest review now those who they are asking about refuting science and the Quran we have two books refuting all the science and the Quran and showing you that this is nothing but a joke including the hadith we are showing it to you in the screen right now about eating ajwa and ending with you know poison will not affect you and magic will not affect you so please don't forget to subscribe to our my other channels like patreon.com and in patreon you do not need really to donate just join the group and in minds it's a free account it's like facebook you can make your own account it's very easy to sign in join me there and they give you 15 minutes to load videos uh, and this is a free forum they are conservative people Muslims they cannot play games there so join us and for sure don't forget to join me in Twitter and in Facebook and wherever I have account just in case all right and always we will never stop doing live broadcast no matter who they, how they try and I really appreciate those who and actually I'm so excited that's you know each time the Muslim they really flag me you guys you didn't need more I mean <laughs> I hope this will happen every day <laughs> I mean seriously what happened why when the Muslims they flag me you Christians donate more I mean what what exactly the point <laughs> maybe maybe the Lord he moved you and he made you like support me that's a wonderful thing so I was saying to myself like okay what happened you know each time I get a flag I get more donations I mean that's nice and uh, I'm, I was thinking that the, the, the shaitan was tempting me to flag myself. I mean, that's good, you know. So, uh, but I don't want to do that, you know. I, I don't want to do that and flag myself. Anyway, so guys, we go back to the topic. When Muhammad he said, "He who eats seven ajwa date every morning will not be affected by poison or magic," and then we find that Muhammad himself he died by poison, as you see with me. This is horrible you see we do not need to ask Muhammad to make the test which he said about the seven ajwa he did the test already and he failed he died in my Bible it says don't 
taste your Lord you remember guys when the Satan he said to Jesus if you are the son of God throw yourself what the Messiah he said to him no don't taste your Lord you know we don't do that we don't this is forbidden in Christianity if somebody says to you if Jesus is your God and you are saved okay we'll kill yourself this is this is this is not the behavior of a this is the Satan try to fool you but here we have Muhammad saying that if you eat seven ajwa then nothing will affect you and then we find Muhammad not only if affect you not only poison Muhammad he said poison and magic you see he he put both and the Muslim they cannot say this is a weak hadith this is Sahir Bukhari they can't say this is oh this is the week well brother this is weak brother theater this is the week yeah this is not weak this is Sahih al-Bukhari and this is mentioned in many books not only Sahih al-Bukhari Abu Dawood etc all of them they confirm that this is Sahih you see it says Sahih I like it you know sometimes I sing it you know when I'm taking a shower I say this is Sahih this is Sahih this is weak this is Sahih unbelievable Allahu Akbar the Kabir uh don't tempt it's the same as don't test my friend you cannot test your lord don't test don't test yes you cannot test your lord test here mean about let me try him can i try my lord all right so when your prophet he made such a statement and then we find that he himself confirming that he is dying because of poison and then in different hadith we find that Muhammad confirming that he was bewitched so where is the where, where is the promise of the seven ajwa ah uh, maybe at that time the prophet was out of ajwa yeah they put a tax on Saudi Arabia palm tree but this is the only fruit they have there I mean they cannot be out of it this is the land of Saudi Arabia. If in Saudi Arabia there is no ajwa, where is the ajwa then? Ajwa in Saudi Arabia is like a coconut in the Philippines or in Thailand. You cannot say there's no ajwa. All right. Now look here what happened. Uh, the prophet was bewitched. And the prophet was controlled by magic now for me I don't believe in this government magic crazy stuff you know those Arab in the old days when when somebody he is mad or doing weird stuff they think they say it's magic because they can't explain what's happening because he looked like everybody so what the problem he's healthy he's not sick he don't have a fever a fever you know what I mean so in the old days anything happened to him like a mental issue people they think it is something have to do with magic because they cannot explain what is the situation like you know like normal illness a human being he have a fever he cannot walk he he's throwing up but somebody he have a, a madness he is healthy he might be a lot stronger than you actually most of those who have madness they are strong because you know i mean they have nothing to worry about so uh, uh to explain how those things happen like let me show you what I mean by those things happen explain the prophet continued for such and such a period imagining that he has slept had sexual relationship with his wives and in fact he did not one day uh -huh, so now they are trying Muhammad trying to explain what's happening to him so he want to blame it on the magic Muhammad he cannot have sex as simple as that do you see what is the story what is the problem the problem is very simple Muhammad cannot have sex and now he have to give his wife an excuse the wives are waiting they are lined up everyone she have her ticket everyone she's waiting for her day and now Muhammad his uh, bring 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 is not working the battery is off so Muhammad now need to explain what's happening so what the explanation the explanation is very simple somebody put magic on me somebody put a magic on me how many of you have my book six and Allah how many of you guys of you in the text have the book six and Allah let me know please because there is something there I want you to check it out in that book 
If you go in the Quran, okay, if we go in the Quran, we will find this verse. Let's go. What happened to this page? All right. If we go in the Quran, we will find this website is find kind of funny. Um, okay. In chapter 113, verse number 3, there is something very funny and very weird. If you have my book, you will see the real interpretation for this verse. Aisha, she come to the prophet and she start touching his hair. Hmm. And it was like night time. Mm -hmm. So Muhammad he said to her, "Ah, your devil is come to you, coming to you." Hmm? And then Muhammad he claimed that he received this verse, chapter one thirteen, verse number three. Translation. The translation is absolutely false. Have nothing to do with the verse meaning. Nothing. And if you have my book, I'm not going to talk about it here because this is this is over R rated, you know. Go and read my book and you will see what I'm talking about. Anyone found it yet in the book? I don't tell me which page. I don't remember which page. You think I remember the pages of my book? <laughs> my friend, don't ask me which page. Anyway, uh, that's mean you did not read it very well. All right, I don't know which page, my friend. I need to, like I need to check it out to see what page. You see, I remember the ideas I put there, but I don't remember what page. Uh, anyway, you will find. Okay, search for the for the verse in there. Um, I think maybe it's you will find it in the index. Maybe. All right. So, it is a very, uh, very, very shameful verse. Very shameful verse. And showing you what kind of a God, what kind of a prophet he is. So, Muhammad, when he claimed, you see here he mentioned the envy. You see the envy? Do you, do you see the envy? What envy? It's exactly fit with this story here. Where Muhammad he is imagining himself having sexual relationship, but in fact he did not. Are you getting my point? So what happened in that story there that his wife's trying to sleep with him, but he cannot do it. So he claimed that okay, Shaitan is coming, and you know, he's there's an envy here, there's a magic, there is something, there's something happening, you know, and uh, I seek refuge by Allah. But isn't it this is Muhammad the same guy who said I was the most weak person between mankind and I invoke my God and he sent me a dish of shish kebab I ate it I get the power of 40 men what happened to his uh, power so all of this was nothing but a fabrication of Muhammad about his strange behavior otherwise we know that nobody okay here we go if magic is a true by the way the Quran teach magic is a true if you remember once I have a debate with the guy he is a fufu boo boo uh, his name Osama Abdullah he made fun of me he says then the magic proven to be false I said are you sure he said yeah I said are you sure he said absolutely I said the third time are you sure he said come on Christian friends don't act like a kid <laughs> don't act like a kid so then when I showed him that uh, this is in the Quran and Allah is the one who sent two angels to teach magic hmm? as we see in the verse in the front of us then the guy he took a shower and he disappeared 
chapter 2 verse 102 Allah he taught magic and he opened the first school of magician in Las Vegas but at that time Las Vegas for Allah it was the Babylonian Tower this was the elevator of Allah each time he want to send them an, 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 an angel he sent him in the elevator of the Babylon Tower and this is telling us where the source of the story is coming from Muhammad is nothing but a copy paste person he heard that there's two angels came from heaven and they are the one who taught people how to do magic and those people those angels they they, they they came down as a trial from Allah just to teach people to do magic to wife and husband not to someone else but they are using it for a different purpose so here you will see that those two angels Harut and Marut they came down teaching magic and such a thing come down at the Babylon the angels Harut and Marut but neither of those taught anyone such without saying disclaimer disclaimer with disclaimer uh, we are a trial by Allah so don't do less me they learned from them that the means so uh, uh, discord between the wife and the husband so what this magic was what the purpose of Allah sent you to angels to teach you how to do magic so you can divorce a wife and husband I mean look how nice Allah is the reason for divorce in this earth is Allah and his magic I mean what kind of God this God is why in the world God who is God Almighty he want people to go and do magic for each other in order to divorce anyway let it go let it go you know like I just heard that uh, some people from Nigeria they wanted to take their chicken with them to the to Russia to the Mondial but the Russian authority did not allow them to take their chicken with them do you know why because they believe in the voodoo Voodoo is a stupid. There's nothing. It's called voodoo, my friend. If the voodoo work, the Muslims they will control a Trump from far away. They will control me. What about the Muslims now? Control me by their voodoo. Get a chicken uh, and make a Christian prince to speak good about Muhammad. I challenge you. Who wanna do voodoo for me? I want to have voodoo. It's my wish. I think every every person have the right to have voodoo. <laughs> There's many naive people, you know, human being, uh, uh, generally speaking, can be naive, even those who they are educated. Like, you know, people, they believe that somebody, he can hit you with the eye and he can break your car. Okay. Ah, this is why Christian Prince, he always drive an old car because he don't want somebody to hit him in the eye. No, my friend, buy me one. I will buy, I will get them. If you can get me the 2018, I will be happy for it. <laughs> <laughs> so don't you know don't let those uh, uh, you know the, the the stories like even the Bible speak about magic but the magician they thought Muth, Musa he is doing magic because this is what they do they are liars but this was not the magic what Musa did it was a miracle this is not magic you know when you ask the Muslims about uh, 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 what his name uh, you asked, asked Muslim, sorry, like the that he said that Jesus, uh, uh, you know, uh, he did uh, medical uh, because at that time he did miracle about medicine because uh, at that time uh, medicine was a very advanced. Wait, hold on, hold on. Muhammad came 600 years after Muhammad, and in the time of Jesus, medical was advanced. <laughs> Good one, good one. Second day, Abdul. Like, do you see Jesus when he do his miracle is asking somebody to go and take some bills? Did you see Jesus says to him, go and drink honey like your prophet? What does this have to do with medicine? But in order to give you a false excuse, why their prophet cannot do what Jesus can do? He says, because at the time of the Roman, the med medication was very advanced. So Allah gave him miracles uh, fit with that. Uh, huh? But Muhammad, he came 600 years after Muhammad. What is the error, my friend? What is the error? Anyone? So we continue. Jesus miracles is miracle it have nothing to do with medicine Jesus did not give people bills 
Jesus, when he made the blind see, he did not tell him go and drink uh, camel urine like Muhammad. Right? What does this have to do with medicine? Since when giving you an eyes for a born person as a blind is a medicine? Since when making a person walk by saying to him walk, he did not give him medicine. He came 600 years after. No, I'm saying, I'm saying Muhammad came 600 years after Jesus. Muhammad came 600 years after Jesus, not Jesus came after Muhammad. So he came 600 years after after Jesus. So how he can be, how can the medicine in the time of Jesus more advanced for someone came 600 years after? It's like saying to me now, like uh, 2018, is less advanced that medicine in the year uh, 1500. No, that's stupid. All right? So it was just a false excuse to tell you why Muhammad he don't have miracles. And look at this miracle. Muhammad is telling the Muslims if you eat seven ajwa, you will not die. Then he, Muhammad himself, he claimed that he died by poison and he was affected by magic. And then Allah, he sent two angels to recover him from, I mean, Muhammad even could not fight that. Look, you see what happened here. Notice with me. Muhammad said, if you eat seven ajwa, no, no ma uh, magic and no poison can affect you. Okay. And here you need to take a note as if you are a scientist. And me, myself, I am, I am a scientist. I have a degree from the elementary school. All right. The same as the prophet, peace upon him. I do not know how to write, how to read. Uh, by the way, the Muslims, they make fun of my English. They say Christian prince sometimes don't even know how to read words. My friend, this is not my first language. Who care? You know, imagine I don't speak good English and there's hundreds and thousands and millions of people, they, they, they listen to me. Actually, just before I start this, this broadcast, one of you, maybe he's here, he said to me, I decide to leave Islam. And he is a Muslim, born of a Muslim family. So imagine with my funny English, the one you are laughing at, how bad is the impact in your cult? So what if I my English is good? Unbelievable. A glory to the Lord. So here we see Muhammad is making a, a very clear recipe. If you eat seven ajwa, that will not affect you. But look, but be careful. After you get infected with the poison, ajwa will not help you. Because here, if we go to the second story, when Muhammad was infected by the magic, you will notice Muhammad is not eating ajwa. Ajwa is not working no more. See, so which mean, according to Dr. Muhammad, ajwa work only before you get infected. After you get infected, ajwa will, no, will be, be no help. So what is the help? Allah will send you two angels and one of, the, one of them will hold you from your toes. I don't know why they even hold him from his toes. Anyone knows? Any Muslim knows why they one of them hold him from his toes? Do you think toes is where like the, the weak point of the magic? Let me look at my toes. So two angels came to him, and one of them said to the other one, What's the problem with this man? What the problem? What is that? Is that a clinic? They are two angels of God and they are coming down and yet they do not know what's the problem. Look, 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 look guys what happened here. I mean, the story is kind of amazing, but people when they read, they don't notice how funny it is. Read carefully with me, please. All right. One of the angels said to the other one, what's wrong with this man? <laughs> hey, Muslims, I am assuming here that the, the, the one who asked the question is the nurse. Is that right? Is that right? How two angels, one of them asking the other guy, how come the other guy knew and the other one do not know? I am So I'm assuming that one of the angels is a, by the way, Muhammad in different story, he said three men. Here is two. Look, the number changed. I mean, I don't know what happened. So one, he asked the other one, what's the problem? Like, what's the problem, brother? The other one, he said to him, he scratched his, uh, you know, and he said, he later replied, look at later. Do you see later, guys? Do you notice the word later? 
You see, people when they read, they don't notice what I notice. I don't know why. That this guy is taking his time. What's the problem? What's the problem? Let us see. What's the problem? I mean, that's amazing. He's an angel of God, and he is taking time to check it out. What's the problem? Maybe he is doing scan, x-ray. Anyone can tell me what's happening? The letter, uh, the letter, sorry, sorry, the letter replied. Ah, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. The letter, 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 letter replied. The other one, sorry, sorry. It's my fault. See, this is my funny English. <laughs> but doesn't matter, actually, in Arabic, you will see it's saying the same. That's why, actually, in here, I thought he is take, translating the Arabic. فَقَالَ الَّذِي عِنْدُ عِنْدَ رِجْلِي لِلَّذِي عِنْدَ رَأْسِي The translation is not even correct. Look. Uh, يا عائشة إن الله أفتاني في أمر استفتيته فيه أتاني رجلا فجلس أحدهما عند رجلي والآخر عند رأسي فقال الذي عند رجلي للذي عند رأسي ما بال الرجل المطبوب يعني مسحور قال ومن طبه أو طبه قال لبيد بن العاصم let's go to translation أو عائشة I has Allah has instructed me regarding the matter about which I had asked him, but this is not what it says actually. Ya Aisha, inna Allah aftani, aftani. He gave me a holy answer. This is aftani. Fatwa is a holy answer about what? About a question I ask him. So Muhammad is asking his God, what's wrong with me? There come to me two men. One of them he sat near my feet, and the other one near my head. The one near my feet ask the one near my head, pointing at me. I mean, why he is pointing at him? If there is someone else in the room. Yeah, yeah, this guy is a kid. You know, he just wanted me to drink poison. He said to me, the Bible says they drink poison. The Christians, they will not die. <laughs> so forget about him. Yeah. So what's wrong with this man? The later replied, and so not not later replied. Sorry, it's my fault. Uh, he said uh, he is under uh, effect of magic the first one asked had work magic on him like the guy he have no idea the other guy the angel angel have no idea this guy is like he was asleep and suddenly he woke up those two angels they are coming from the seven heaven eleven and all the time the angel the first angel did not ask the second angel where are we going now suddenly the questions are coming what's wrong with him the other guy he think huh what's wrong with him hmm. um i think he is under magic the guy he said and he point his finger at him he is under magic are you serious all right forget about dr rohi man I, i'm done with those kids he is a phd guy but he's an idiot they, they, all of them they are kids who dr rohi He's even scared to give us his name. He is a doctor in the other university. He's scared to give us his name. I, I force him many times. You see, he lives in Islamic country, so he has no reason to be scared. But he's scared for a very simple reason. He don't want to be humiliated in front of the Muslims for what he said to me. That's why they are scared. You see, the Muslims, when they make explanation for anything, at the end they say, Allah knows best. Do you know what does that mean? It's a discla disclaimer. It is a disclaimer. It's like a protection, taqiyya. Allah knows best, which means whatever I said is garbage. Allah knows best. So don't blame me. All right? Uh, and here you will see the story, the whole story, confirming that Muhammad was controlled because somebody took some hair from him. And now, now I understand why... Uh, Sam Shamoon is bold. I mean, he's lucky. I mean, how you can control Sam Shamoon by hair? You cannot. So, my friend, if you have hair, you are in danger. You better call your insurance company and ask them to put insurance over your hair because somebody might take it and control you.
your mother-in-law she can ask her daughter which means your wife to take some of your some of your hair from the pillow and then they go to the magician and they control you and guess what will happen next second day you will find yourself going and buying a tv for your mother-in-law and maybe buying a car for her and not only that maybe you find yourself paying you know paying for her vacation i mean it's very dangerous it's very dangerous so be careful my friend and if if this is what the muslims believe in i mean look 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 what those two angels they did they found the name of the guy who did the black magic and they actually in different hadith it says that the one who did it it was his daughters his daughters they are very very beautiful daughters unbelievable man witches witches so those daughters they are the one and their father they do magic and they are jews always we have to blame the jews muhammad cannot have sex with his wives we blame the jews do you see it what the problem here I mean, why this magic is affecting, you know, you know, you know, Muslims, when you say that the prophet was unable to have sex and they did magic, are you saying that the magic was affected only in that uh, location? How? I have no idea. So to the Muslims who say to me about the drinking magic, my friend, the Bible never said to drink magic. The Bible speak that no, no poison of this world can affect us, which means the poison of the teaching, the poison of the devil, the poison of Islam, the poison of the lies. The guy who tell, who, who tell us this is poison. You see, when the Muslims, when the Muslims, they believe that Jesus is a prophet. What the point of believing in Jesus as a prophet? What the point of believing that Mary she was a virgin? What the point of believing in Abraham and Moses? Because the devil, in order to put poison for you, he put it for you where your mouth go. Do we do you understand, guys? If somebody want to kill somebody by poison, and here we are not talking about literal poison, he will he will he will put the poison in in the most beloved area you like you like to go to. So if it is literally, it's going to be a dish of food. What is your favorite dish of food? Like the, the, the Jewish women who killed Muhammad, as we see in the hadith here, it was a Jewish woman who put the poison for Muhammad. And before she put the poison, she asked one of the Muslims, what is the favorite part your prophet like to eat in the goat? So he told her the shoulder. So she put the poison in the shoulder. This is where people put the poison for, in where your mouth go. So when Muhammad he did point put his poison and he created a cult, it's called Islam. He need good food. He need the name of Isa, the name of Mary, the name of uh, Musa, the name of Abraham to make you believe that he's a prophet like the rest. To insert himself between. You see, the devil always he changed his uniform. He can come to you as a priest. If you are a Christian person, you will not open your door to uh, to Las Vegas and gambling and etc. So how he will come to you? How I can get inside your house? How will come to you in the uniform of a priest, a child molester maybe? Someone claimed to be a prophet, but yet he is marrying a child. Her name is you know her name is Aisha, and she is six years old. So always the devil he try to find his way to you. What is your interest? If you are a religious person, still the devil, he can come to you. He will come through religion. If you are interested in drinking, etc., he will come to you through that. If you are interested in gambling, uh, money, authority, power, uh, sex, it doesn't matter. He is always there. He can come to you through a bishop of a church. Satan is very powerful, my friend. Satan is very powerful. It's not a joke. And evil is exist. For those who don't believe that evil is exist, go and read the news. Go and read the news and you will see what evil is if you don't believe in evil. Uh, anyway, you know, for us as a Christians, if we are, if we are following 
the good teaching of the good Lord we will never be deceived and there is a sentence I would like every Christian to hold to it I don't know if any of you can tell me what is that Jesus said anyone knows there is something Jesus said is amazing and it is the most priceless guidance for me as a person anyone can help me I find it the most amazing thing I cannot believe that's you know like it's very simple it's very anyone can understand it you can see them from their fruits thank you very much from their fruits you shall know them not from their speeches everybody can make a good speech actually the evil ones can make the best speeches most of them they are smart intelligent fast thinkers they are sponsored by the devil so they will give you a wonderful speech but you will know them from their fruits the devil never give good fruits so you in order to examine anyone it doesn't matter who let us say somebody tomorrow come to you and says I am a prophet some same to you I am Jesus how we will know who is who is who you know from the fruits Muhammad he claimed to be a prophet he believed in God he believed in Abraham he believed in Moses he believed in Isa he believed in the Virgin Mary so what is left what is left is the fruits and a lot of poison coming with this fruit look at his hand you know how somebody can be a good teacher if he have nothing good about him name for me one evil thing Muhammad did not do in the list of evil right and this is how we can find out by the way the guy his name is Badr Muhammad is this this is the guy he was texting me in Facebook let him let him text please the guy his name is Badr how are you Badr this is the guy who challenged me to debate and he wanted me to drink poison he's here and we made everybody you know wait for him to to uh, to call us what happened better and later we find that better is a potato he don't dare to call me so better what do you say about your prophet drinking poison and die by poison and yet he is the one who said if you eat seven ajwa nothing will affect you And by the way, Mr. Badr, he lived very close to the Kaaba, so I'm assuming that he got the blessing of the black stone this month. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Brother, did you take a selfie when you are kissing the black stone? Mm -hmm. Yeah, but brother, it was so wet. Why? Because of saliva. Do you know how many saliva touch it today? Do you have an idea how many saliva touch the black stone today? And you wonder why people they die when they go to Hajj from diseases? Imagine a small tiny hole. Thousands of people they are putting their mouth, and God knows. Sorry, Allah knows, not God. What God? God knows nothing. Allah is the one who knows everything. And Allah knows how many bacteria are inside. Do you think if you drink poison after kissing the black stone, nothing will happen to you? Guys, actually remind me, this is remind me of the story that when when Abraham Habashi was coming to destroy the Kaaba, according to Muslims, and this is, can be found in the Quran, in the chapter of the elephant. By the way, the I love the Quran. Actually, one of you gave me an idea, and I'm going to do it, I promise, uh, to write about the stories about animals in the Quran. Because the Quran, you feel like it's like a, like a zoo. Like there is a chapter about the spider. There's a chapter about the cow. There's a chapter about the elephant I mean the chapters about everything So here if we go to the chapter of Al-Fil Which means the elephant I like elephants actually Alam tara kaifa fa'ala rabbuka bi ashab al-fil What 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 happened? Look at the translation guys from the beginning with no presentation See though, not how the Lord dealt with the companions of the elephant. What elephant? Abdul elephant in Saudi Arabia. 
Are you serious? The God of Islam making a verse about a story that elephant army is coming to destroy the Kaaba. How for the sake of Allah, my friend, elephant can walk in the desert of Saudi Arabia. Do you know how much water the elephant need? The elephant, not only he need more than 600 liters to drink, he need a double just to fresh his skin. He cannot stand the heat. This is why in Africa they jump inside the water during the daytime because they cannot sweat. Their skin is so thick. So how in the world Mr. Elephant was able to go all the way to Saudi Arabia? And then Allah, guys, he sent a bird. Birds. And those birds, my friend, birds. Oh, but do you want to see the interpretation for this verse? Who want to see the interpretation for this verse? Let us let us make a vote. If you want to see the interpretation for this verse, give me one. <clears throat> let us see. Okay. Look like uh, many of you is giving me one. That's a good thing. Okay. But you know, the bad news is, my friend, that we Arab, we don't believe in democracy. So if you say we vote, we do the opposite. I mean, I'm sorry. You forgot that I'm a Middle Eastern and I'm an Arab. I mean, who cares if you said one or not? We are Arab. At the end of the day, we do what we want. Hello. <laughs> vote. Yes, you're right. Yeah, we are the very democratic people. Very democratic. Yeah, okay, come on. Look, they are giving me one still. I mean, come on. I'm an Arab. Since when we believe in democracy, and the prophet is the first democratic uh, person, the one who changed his religion, kill him. This is democracy. This is absolute hit direct direction for democracy. Hmm. So if we go to the Okay, thank you for giving me all the one. What about you give me one dollar donation instead of this one? I mean, that will be better. So the Muslim will flag me more. Now listen, in chapter 105, it says the following. Chapter of the elephant. Even the elephant have a chapter. I mean, I'm so upset that Christian prince don't have a chapter there. I'm sure if Allah heard about me at that time, he will make a chapter. It's called the chapter of a Christian prince. And I'm sure at that time, Allah, if he heard about YouTube, he will say, YouTube, oh, what do you know about YouTube? YouTube is tube, tube, tube. Okay, uh, what is that? Chapter 65. We want 105. All right, let us see what the story here. Um, I mean, this Quran is very funny. Haven't you considered interrogative meant to provoke marvel in the other word marvel at the way which your lord dealt with the men of the elephant yeah what happened who was named mahu mahmoud and the man where abraham the king of yemen and his troops so what is speaking about that there's a guy he is a christian guy from ethiopia coming from yemen and he is coming with his troops and he have elephants Allah he had built a church in Sana'a he built a church in Yemen and he ordered to, to, to divert the, uh, the, the, the visitors of the Kaaba from Mecca to that place so he sent his army to destroy the Kaaba in his way just to make this the story short in his way to Mecca when he arrived close to Mecca Allah he sent a flying F-16 birds and they are carrying rocks made from mud and they throw it and they did kill all the elephant army what a story hold on hold on so muslims why saudi arabia is buying f-16 and why you are contracting with the USA for the AWACS to protect your airspace? And why you brought the American to protect Saudi Arabia for the last 50 years? And why you have the birds in the sky?
and not only that you can go right now and search in Google Prophet Google peace upon him mashallah alhamdulillah Prophet Google knows more than Allah I'm telling you a lot more <laughs> we can't compare look if you go right now and search for a guy his name is Al-Qurmuti Al-Qurmuti he destroyed the Kaaba and not only that Al-Qurmuti stood in the middle of the Kaaba when his men they are destroying it stone by stone and he was screaming saying to Allah where is your birds hmm? hello Allah where is your birds Muslims where is the birds here we go we got Al-Qurmuti entering the Kaaba killing more than 10,000 Muslims in that day 10,000 Muslims and he destroyed the Kaaba and he took the black stone and he make it a poop stone for more than 21 years according to you Muslims and Allah never sent his birds what happened to the f-16 of Allah and not only al qumati destroyed the Kaaba destroyed many times Al-Hajjaj Ibn Yusuf al saqafi he burned it he burned it go and watch go and listen you will see the Muslim scholars explain to you what happened so where is the where is the birds of Allah and what make it more funny that at that time Allah he sent his birds to save the Kaaba but at that time according to Muslims there was more than the 360 idol so Allah he sent and not only that remember they just said here they just said that the guy his name is Abraha he built what anybody can remind me what Abraha he built Anyone want to tell me what Abraham he built? He built a church, right? Okay. So why Allah at that time those Christians are still true Christians? Because actually, even in the time of Muhammad, the Christians true Christians, and we can prove it easy. So how come Allah defending the Kaaba, the place of idols, where people they worship many gods, and destroying the the, the believer army? Because those are believers, those are Christians supposedly. Because remember, according to Islam, even in the time of Muhammad, the Roman, they were believers. If we go to the Quran, you will see as just to show you, you know, how to connect the dots together, learn how to do that. The Muslim they say to you, in the time of the Prophet, the Christians they corrupt the Bible. That's false. Read with me carefully. Chapter 30. Even the chapter name is the Roman. The Roman have a chapter, my friend. The the Surah Al Rum, the chapter of the Roman, chapter thirty. What the chapter thirty says? Chapter thirty says Alif Lam Mim. You ask the Muslim, what does that mean? They say we do not know. Allah knows best. Thank you very much. <laughs> Allah knows best. So, in this chapter, the Quran says the Roman Empire has defeated. Okay. In the land close by but they after this defeat they will be victorious actually the translation is very rubbish you know the translation says they will win again in a few years and the word here is Buddha which is a three to nine maximum and then within a few years and then it says on that day shall the believer rejoice okay anyone can tell me why the believers will rejoice if the Roman being victorious guys are you getting my point are you getting my point why the believers will rejoice if the Roman won the war the Roman are Roman they are Christians okay fighting with who with the Persian okay so why what the business of the Muslim to rejoice because the Roman are believers get the point Muhammad at that point he claimed to be Christian too the, the potato Muhammad at that time he's playing a Christian like those are my people huh ah, my people so they said to him okay your people now they lost the war hello so Muhammad he said okay hold on yeah they lost the war now but in a few years they will win again but this is something not normal to happen. The Roman they are having a war with the Persian for 300 years non-stop. 
So every few weeks they have a new war. <laughs> They lose the win, they lose the win. So what a big deal. I mean, what kind of a prophecy? Imagine if I say to a woman, I want to prophesy to you. Next month, you are going to have your period. What? She's young. She would have a period every month. It's the same saying that the Roman, they would win again. Because the Roman, they are in war with those people. They lose, they win. Sometimes the, the Persian, they win. Sometimes the Roman, they win. Then a stop war, 300 years. Not three years but the point here Muhammad is saying that the believers will rejoice for the victory of the Romans why will rejoice for the victory of the Romans unless they are believers too why Allah is taking the side of the Roman and remember the Roman in the time of Muhammad are the one who will rejoice for so why Allah is killing the Roman in the time in that case it was the Ethiopian supposedly but they are the same Christians at the end of the day so why Allah he sent birds to kill the Christians coming from Abraham army to destroy the Kaaba when at that time the Kaaba was the place of worshiping idols 360 idols around the Kaaba people goes naked around the Kaaba and Allah protecting that place Naked. Read it. They used to go naked, totally naked. And then after Muhammad in his life, in his last days of life, because he cannot go and watch no more. So he forbid actually it, this is not the real reason the real reason is there was a woman she go naked around the Kaaba and she was beautiful and Muhammad he like her and because Muhammad was jealous he wanted to, to marry her so he forbid people to go naked around the Kaaba so Muhammad now in control of the Kaaba and he is in control of Quraysh but still people going naked around the Kaaba so why Muhammad did not get angry for that you know what I mean Muhammad is being upset from the Christians saying we worship Jesus, but Muhammad is not upset from people going around the Kaaba naked. Imagine if this is still exists and now the, the, the tourism to Kaaba will increase 100%. If not 1,000, I would not mean 1 million. Hmm? Going naked around the Kaaba? If you have my book actually the six and Allah you will find some stories about that about the woman who was singing the song and where Muhammad he saw her and she is so hot unbelievable Muhammad could not resist the temptation so Muhammad always he make verses for his benefit he liked the women he want to have the women he don't want her to go naked he is jealous man he don't want men to look at her so he decided to forbid people from going around the Kaaba naked, but already he is control of the Kaaba for a long time. Why he did not for, you know, forbid them from doing that for, from the first day he arrived to, the, to Mecca. This is the first thing he should do when he arrived to Mecca, that nobody should do that. This is why having my new book, Allah and Sex, is very important for those who seek knowledge and reference. Because everything there is documented, you know, as you know me, I never say something without proofs and reference. Again, guys, I don't want to remind you that to leave your, you know, your uh, review about the book, an honest review, uh, if you finish reading it. And make a review in value number one and value number two, not only like in one and then leave the value. Because if you have both, then you have to make a review in both. I know that you guys are, are lazy, but let, let me tell you something. The one I've been told by Allah that the one who will make a review for my book, Allah will give him a corner lot in the heaven. Have you ever heard of a prophet? He promised a guy for exchange of his farm that Allah will give him a corner lot in the heaven. I want to get one. Location, location, location. Always, always location, location, location. The guy Muhammad, he saw a guy, a poor guy, he have a farm. And you know, farm in Saudi Arabia at that time, that's mean you are rich, not a poor, you know. His name is Abu Dahdah. 
and Muhammad he exchanged with him. He told him, What about we exchange? You know, exchange, huh? Allah give you a land in heaven and you give me your farm. The stupid guy he went to his wife, You believe it? You believe it? What? What happened? The Prophet he promised me a land in heaven. I give him my farm in return. <laughs> I cannot wait to get land like this. Hey guys, who of you want to exchange his house if it's in the front beach, like in Florida or somewhere, and I will promise you a house in heaven, corner lot. Anyone want to do that? If you have a house in Miami Beach or something, what about we do some exchange, my friend? Hmm? Anyone? Nobody? Look like I'm not convincing until now. I don't sound like a prophet. Anyway, so you know the, the stories about Islam is very funny, and there's nothing really there even to to consider to be real. This guy is this man Muhammad is a madman. Now, guys, I'm not going to stay long today because I hope that this Muslim he will call me and we will have a live debate. But he is a coward, he's a potato, and we refuted him. We got him busted. And we will get busted whoever try even try to speak and defend Islam and I encourage the Muslims don't be aware I mean don't worry sorry don't really worry because if Allah is in your side he's he's Allah I mean come on I mean I think the Muslims what they are worried about is going to happen to them what happened to them in the Quran if you remember uh, Muhammad in the Quran He promised the Muslims that 100 of you can fight 1,000. You remember chapter 8, verse number 65 and 66? So 100 of you Muslims can fight 1,000 of us. I mean, come on. The fact is the opposite. If we count the numbers of the Jews in Israel and the number of the Islamic army in the world, we will find that the Jews today they are fighting one to a million, if not more. <laughs> so Allah, He pro you know He promised the Muslims that if you go in war, brother, if you go in war, one hundred of you can vanquish uh, two hundred. Sorry, uh, not only. Uh, uh, sorry, twenty of you can uh, vanquish two two uh, two hundred. You see it. So if a 20 of amongst you, patient and preserving, they will vanquish 200. The Muslim, they went to fight and they lost their ass being kicked. So now they came back. Muhammad, he need to fix it right away. Right away, the verse after it says, For the present, Allah has lightened your task, for he knows that there is a weakness, weak spot on you. There is a weak spot. We discovered there is a weak spot. What we can do? You cannot make it 20 to 200. So now... Uh, because of that, uh, if there is a hundred of you patient preserving, they will vanquish 200. What? From 20 fighting 200, which means every Muslim in the verse 65, according to Allah, every Muslim can kill 10. One Muslim, he can fight 10. This is what 20 to 200 mean. It's the ratio of 1 to 10. In the verse after it, Allah, he found a weakness. So he decided to change the ratio from 100 to fight 1,000 to 100 can fight 200. That's really amazing. That's amazing. Hmm. I don't know what to say. I have to say that Islam is nothing but a joke and the more you study it the more you see how funny it is and how crazy it is and uh, uh, you know uh, I hope that Muslims they will take what we say seriously and they check it out I mean don't don't take what I say seriously I mean to believe in it no no don't do that I want you Muslims to go and study, open the interpretation books, open the history of Islam books, read, educate yourself. And I challenge you to stay believing in Islam after studying this cult.
this is a very stupid cult they make a thousands of videos about science and the Quran okay who is the Muslim want to tell me one science and the Quran right now right here who want to do that let me be sure that's my Skype is open hold on to see if there is any Muslim want to call me and tell me about one scientific uh, discovery in the Quran maybe something new I discovered lately uh, I made a video about it that the Muslim they are saying that Allah spoke about the cement <laughs> the cement <laughs> and there is one thing funny about the Muslims when they speak about science in the Quran they say maybe Allah here he meant I mean have you ever heard of science is called the science of maybe maybe I may okay maybe Allah is God maybe he's not too maybe the Quran is a book of God maybe it's not maybe maybe Allah here he meant what 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 maybe mean maybe simply is just a, a protection of like reverse protection like because now if he say I was sure people they will laugh at him later and they will say well it doesn't mean that so he said do you remember I said maybe <laughs> oh boy any Muslim would like to call to tell me about a scientific miracle in the Quran maybe maybe my Skype is open after I close they will say we challenge him to debate us and they will start sending texts harassing the Christians in Facebook my friend don't text privately the Muslims especially if you are a woman if they want to debate me they knew how to find me do you think really the Muslims cannot know do not know where to find Christian Prince don't tell him go and debate him don't said call him that's it don't even talk to him post in your page if you have a page okay whoever want to debate Christian Prince here we go this is his Skype call him he's alive his life at 4 30 p.m. Saturday just do it uh, we have mr. Ahmad Kandir he's saying I can find a lot of Christians not following the teaching of Jesus my friend people are people they follow they don't follow that will not change anything that the teaching of Jesus is the most amazing what about you do you follow the teaching of Muhammad do you uh, do you have a wife she is six years old do you jump over your neighbors and kidnap their women like your Muhammad your prophet did do you go to your your son house and flirt with the wife of your son when the husband is not in at home so do you follow Muhammad so look look how bad it is what we are saying if a Christian not following the teaching of Jesus simply he is no Christian because he lost his Christianity because Jesus said not everyone says to me Lord Lord will enter the kingdom of my father but the one who do his will and we know what his will is what about you now do you follow the teaching of Muhammad do you Muslims the one who's saying there's many Christian don't follow the teaching of Jesus so what People are people. People do commit sin. We are sinners. All of us, we are sinners. But there's a huge difference between someone not following the teaching of Jesus, which is an amazing teaching, and someone is following the filthy teaching of Muhammad. Let me teach you about the filthy teaching of Muhammad as an example, not limited. Here in the front of us, there is an example of the teaching of the Prophet. We call him a Prophet. Was, that's what he called himself but he's a false prophet look at your prophet advice a man his name is Jabir a man his name is Jabir Jabir it was doing jihad with the prophet all right your prophet he noticed that Jabir is in a rush to go back home so he said to him <coughs> Jabir what's up why you are in a rush he said to him uh, you know uh, read with me carefully we were with Allah messenger may peace blah 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 in expedition when we returned I urged my camel to move quickly 
okay and it was a slow there met me a ride from behind and he gagged gagged it with my iron tip stick so like muhammad he gagged his he he, he poked the, the the camel which is this guy riding and then i turned my face i found that the prophet and then is the prophet said to me what is hasting you what 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 is hasting you why you are in rush i said oh allah messenger i am in newly wedded whereupon he said is it a virgin that you married or previously married <laughs> Do you see the teaching of your prophet? I mean, what's the business of this man? If I am, I met with one of my friends in the street, huh? and I am claiming to be the good man of God. And he said to me, I married. So what is my business to ask him if she is a virgin or she is not? What is, what is that it's about? The guy is married. So what's your business? Then the guy, he said, uh, with the one previously married, he said, why? Why? Why, my friend? Habibi, why? Habibi, why? Why not a young girl? So that you could play with her and she could play with you. I mean, look at the wonderful teaching and advice of a prophet of God. Is that a teaching of God? My friend, I'm not going to make a nickname. Call me for one. You choose a topic, no problem. Mr. Ahmed, you call me, you choose a topic. Don't I'm not going to ask you a question. You ask me the question. You ask me the question which you like me to ask you. What do you think? Guys, is that a good deal? You tell me, I want you to ask me this question. So you give me the question, I'll just read it, give it to you back. What do you think? Is that cool, guys? I mean, how easier I can be more than this? You tell me, I want you to ask me this question. I will read exactly what you taught me. Nothing more, not even one word. And you answer it. What do you say? You cannot tell me that this is hard. This is very easy. You are admin in a smaller group in Facebook. Let us pray to Allah to make you a big admin, my friend. What, what does this have to do with my topic? Are you going to call me or not? Anyway. Do you see the, the great teaching of the Prophet? The man is happily married. Happily married. This is why he is hasting to go to his wife. What is the problem of a Prophet of God who claimed that he is bringing a teaching and wisdom of God? Remember, Muhammad, he had two plastic surgery in order to get his wisdom. According to the, to the hadith, Muhammad, Allah, he sent two angels and they installed two dish in his chest, one dish of wisdom and one dish of faith. And by the way, guys, in case you do not know, if you like to have some dish of wisdoms, please contact me because if you are a special customer, we can send you a dish of wisdom with every book of mine. Have you ever heard of wisdom coming in dishes? That's happening only in Islam. The only religion where the Prophet of Allah, he needed a surgery, and this surgery is to open his chest from here to here. Oops, where's my hands going? Sorry. They asked the guy, what does that mean from here to here? He said from his throat to his balls. Allah, he opened from his throat to his balls to install a dish of wisdom. Where is the wisdom of your prophet? I mean, why he's going down? And since when wisdom and faith, they come in dishes. And now Muhammad, this is after the surgery. This is his wisdom. So how was stupid Muhammad before the wisdom surgery? Do you know guys what I'm saying? If this is Muhammad after the surgery, if this is the wisdom of a prophet of God after a plastic surgery, so how ugly was the wise, the wise Muhammad before the surgery? <laughs> this is exactly what the Chinese, they say. He left as a donkey, he never came back as a horse. So Allah, he make a surgery, 10 surgery, 5 surgery, it doesn't matter. He left as a donkey, he will never come back as a horse. This is a guy after a surgery of wisdom and faith. Hmm? 
this is after the surgery advising the man because what you are what what he is saying to this man leave leave your wife leave your wife and look for a young child look how evil he is the the guy is married what's your business go and get a child why you want why you don't get a child what's wrong with you so what you can do with her so you can play with her you want the guy to divorce his wife who he like very much obviously and he is asking a Russian to go home to see her he miss her just because you have a fantasy you sick Muhammad to have a baby child in your bed this is the wisdom of the Prophet of Islam this is the opposite of the teaching of Jesus Jesus was rebuking the Jews for divorcing their wives because the Jews what they do okay today he's you know he marry a woman she is uh, young she is beautiful tomorrow he let her go he got a new woman this is totally the opposite of what teaching of Jesus first of all Jesus forbid us from harming the little ones he said it's better for you to put a milestone in your neck from harming the little ones this is harm to the little ones even Muhammad he made a chapter in the Quran about it says that if you cannot be fair with the orphan then go have sex with the non-orphan what you want to have sex with the orphan is that how charity work in Islam orphan is an orphan So my friend, we invite all the Muslims to come and debate us and we invite you Muslims to read my books. And if you find anything I say is not a true, please don't hesitate to call me and to rebook me. And if I am not telling the truth, I will apologize and I will say I was lying if I am. But you have to prove it. Who want to do that? Any beautiful Muslim would like to call us? No? Okay. Well, you remind me of what happened to the Prophet when the Christians, they came to debate him. He said, okay, well, <laughs> uh, okay, they are asking me to debate him. Allah told me not to debate you. Allah told me to tell you this. Bring your children, I bring my children. Bring your women, I bring my women. Bring your goats, I bring my goats. And let us invoke Allah to curse the one's line. This is what happened to Muhammad when the Christians challenged him for a debate. And this is your Quran, my friend. Do you see it? Come, 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 bring your children huh? and our children, bring your women and our women. They are, those are bishops. They don't have children. They don't have women. Look at the ignorance of the God of Islam. He is asking this guy to challenge the bishop to bring their women. They don't have women. Those are Christian monks. This is additional proof that the one who made this verse is an idiot. What the children, what women? It's like saying to the Pope, hey Pope, bring your four wives. Oh, hold on, hold on. You, you remind me of something I said before. Once I went to a Muslim room, and you know those Muslim rooms, anything you say, just to praise Islam, they love it. So I, I type in the text, praise be to Allah. Today, the Pope of the Catholic and his uh, uh, third wife and his mother who died last year, they converted to Islam. What, what? The Pope of the Catholic and his third wife and his mother who died last year, they converted to Islam. The admin was talking, and he said, guys, guys, stop, stop the text, stop the text, stop the text. And he started reading my text. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Guys, did you see it? The wife, the third wife of the Pope, and his mother who died last year, converted to Islam today. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And the room was going crazy, the chat room. Allahu Akbar, takbir, Allahu Akbar, takbir. Like, what the heck? What's wrong with those people? 
Nobody have a brain? Just make up any lie, praising Islam, just lie, lie, praising Islam, everybody take it. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And you know, like, and, the, and then one of them, he was a smart, so he he dotted them, he said, you idiot, there's the Pope don't have wives, and how his mother, she died last year, and he converted to Islam today. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Hmm. Oh. Uh, Abdul. Abdul, what I can say. Uh, once I went in a chat room. I have a lot of uh, uh, memory with those things. So once in a chat room, Muslims, they said, hey, Christian Prince, you are here, huh? Okay. You know what? We got you busted. We have a recording of you. I said, really? He said, yeah. Let us show everybody how you convert people out of Islam. Okay. In the chat room, I used to say, bring me a Muslim. I will give you five hamburgers. It's just, you know, a joke. Like now, we, we say. So they, they, they played my voice saying, see, guys? Christian Prince saying, bring me five, a Muslim, I will give you five hamburgers. So, and they said, okay, take the mic, take the mic. And I took the mic, so I saying, are you saying that you Muslims exchange your prophet and your God Allah for five hamburgers? <laughs> and they get so angry. So, I mean, this is what you said. You just, you just said that. Why are you upset from me? You are the one who said, this is how you convert people out of Islam. You give them five hamburgers. You know? In other ones, uh, uh, once I went in the chat room too, and the Muslims, they said, hey, Christian Prince, come, come to the mic. Let's laugh at you. Supposedly, because they are in control, they can't give me a dot. In, in case you do not know what Pal talk, how, how it works, they can dot you and take the mic from you. You see, they can mute you anytime. So I took the mic. And I start saying, they are waiting for me to say something wrong about Muhammad to doubt me. I said, the prophet was an amazing man. He never lie. He never steal. He never rape. And all the text in the room saying, liar, liar, a Christian prince, liar, liar. He never rape any women. Liar. He never been accused of a sin. They were liar. The admin, he read, the, he read that the whole room. And he took the mic from there. He said, you stupid. He humiliated the prophet again in our room. And you are agreeing with him again. He got you busted. Even here, didn't you know even what he's saying? He was saying the prophet did not lie. And you said to him, liar. You said the prophet did not rape. And you said to him, liar. What's wrong with you? <laughs> they don't listen. All of what they know that this guy, his name is a Christian prince. And he will never say something good about the prophet. So whatever he say, we say to him, liar. So I was saying Muhammad was a good man. They say to me, you are a liar. Muhammad never rape. You are a liar. Muhammad never steal. You are a liar. Because this is a Christian prince. Whatever he say, we should say to him, you are a liar. So who is a Muslim want to tell me you are a liar life? Eric, he's saying Isa was a Muslim. Yeah, Isa was a Muslim. Who is Isa? I challenge you to find me the name of Isa where it's coming from. I nice, nice to meet you, Isa. Who's Asa? <laughs> Guys, if you look at the Quran, you will see another stupid mistake when Muhammad speak about Asa. The name of Asa, we cannot find who is he. Number two, Asa is a son of a woman. Her name is Maryam. Her father is Umran. Who's Umran? Umran is the father of Moses. Who's Moses? He is the brother of Aaron. Who is Aaron? Is the son of Umran. Hello. And he is the brother of Mary. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy so we end at the end of the day we find that mary she is the sister of moses and aaron and both of them they have a father his name is Amran. the muslim in the interpretation the scholars they try to fix this issue they said yes the father of moses is Amran and aaron and the father of mary is Amran. but this is different Amran. aha different Amran. but the quran says that mary she is the sister of aaron Ah, oh, yeah, she is a sister like a tradition. Tradition, they used to say that. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, I feel like converting today. Anyway, guys, I'm not going to stay longer because I'm going to finish. I'm trying to finish my book be before my coming trip uh, abroad. Uh, and uh, for those who do not uh, have my books yet, please feel free. Uh, you can go to Amazon in your country. Just type my name, Christian Prince, and you will see the list of my books. Um, 
mm, if you speak English you can get the deception of Allah and Quran and science uh, in depth and uh, we have the new book released in English which is Allah and six it's volume one and volume number uh, two um, those can be found in Amazon in English and then we have the German books which is two book in German this one is to refute the Muslim fabricated funny science but in the same time it is a hilarious book showing you how stupid this cult is how they try to make what is stupid try to make it as science same as the other German book which is a translation for the deception of Allah uh, and again I hope that people they will make a review after reading their books uh, because the more review you do the more help you explain what this book is about and I encourage even Muslims to go and make a false review. Please don't hesitate because Allah is asking you to defend Islam. And false review is nothing, nothing, and authentic. Everything in Islam is authentic, including false review. And actually, this is one of the most authentic things about Islam to make a false review. As an example, the first person who gave a false review is Muhammad. He never read our Bible, he never have it, yet he gave a review for it. I mean, how in the world you can review a book without having the book? Things happen only in Islam. Things happen, my friend. The Prophet, he can give a review for any book he want. If the Muslim themselves, they confirm that at that time, there was not even a single Bible written in Arabic. So how Muhammad was reviewing our book? Not even a single book is written in Arabic even the even the Torah so how the how Muhammad was reviewing the Torah the guy he cannot even read and read his own language according to Muslims so how somebody cannot read his own language can review a book in different language and this is what happened to my books I have a book in French you will see the guy reviewing my book in English because you don't speak French you find my book there's a guy there's a German guy his name is I forgot what his name uh, he, he was attacking uh, brother Amir and uh, Ethan and etc and he was saying this this what they translated to me and he was saying to them go right now and give a false translation post uh, sorry post a review false review in his book do you believe it and now if you go to my book there in Amazon you will find the Muslims posting the false review they never have the book but in Islam you can review a book my friend without reading it it's a very traditional behavior of Muslims it's very Islamic and very authentic so I'm not really surprised so I want to say thank you guys for being here may the Lord bless you and uh, I will make video short videos to continue with what we call a series we will make it's called while Jesus Muhammad is so already I made I think two videos three videos of them so I will continue with those they are going to be short so you can share them and download them and feel free to download this video if you want it's up to you may the Lord bless you all and until we see you to not tomorrow tomorrow is Sunday until we see you soon again we will update you but you can always follow us with the short videos and mostly I will do the second live podcast in Saturday unless I have a Muslim challenging me to do a debate if that happened I would cannot resist the temptation sorry so if you bring me a muslim he will debate me live then we can do it so i want to say thank you may the lord bless you and until we see you soon again i want to remind everybody that if somebody says to you why you believe in jesus say to him bring me someone have better teaching and i will follow someone who said love your enemy not 2000 years ago only now you will not find all the human right law cannot match anything of the teaching of Jesus if everybody practice love your enemy there is no enemy left if somebody practice what Jesus said if somebody ask you for your coat give him your dress nobody will suffer nobody will stay homeless nobody will be hungry nobody will be poor 5% of the world, they own what 95% don't own, just 5%. The owner of Google, the owner of 
Microsoft, the owner of Apple, the owner of Amazon, the owner of etc. They own more than hundreds of millions own, and they own for a very simple reason: for nobody want to practice what the teaching of Jesus says. Where you share, you don't keep for yourself, and don't be selfish. The whole world is in chaos because we spend too much money in security, for we have enemies. But if the whole world love their enemies, there is no enemies left. What you spend in the budget for defense can be spent to teach children, to feed them, to have better life, to build gardens, schools. We spend hundreds of billions, if not a trillions. The whole world, even the most poor countries, they spend a huge amount of their budget just for security. Why? Because human beings choose to take the side of evil, but not to take the side of Jesus. If everybody loves his enemy, nobody will kill, nobody will rape, nobody will steal. The spirit of love is the spirit of the Messiah. Bring me something better than the spirit, and I will follow it. But you cannot. And with this, I say to you, may the Lord bless you, and enter we we'll see you soon again. Christ is Lord, and Islam is false. And see you soon again.